Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and here we have 75 questions for pediatrics including pediatric disorders um, and um, pathophysiology. Enjoy. Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A two-year-old child is brought to the emergency department with a barking cough, inspiratory stridor, and mild retractions. The mother reports that the child had cold-like symptoms for two days before the cough began. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Asthma. B. Bronchiolitis. C. Croup. D. Epiglottitis. Answer. C. Croup. Rationale. Croup is characterized by a barking cough, inspiratory stridor, and retractions. It typically follows a viral upper respiratory infection. Asthma, bronchiolitis, and epiglottitis have different clinical presentations. Question 2. A four-year-old with croup is experiencing increased work of breathing and stridor at rest. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer oral dexamethasone as ordered. B. Start a nebulized saline treatment. C. Ensure the child is sitting upright. D. Prepare for possible intubation. Answer. A. Administer oral dexamethasone as ordered. Rationale. Oral dexamethasone helps reduce inflammation and improve symptoms in croup. While ensuring the child is upright and preparing for intubation are important, administering the medication is the priority intervention. Question 3. A six-month-old infant presents with poor feeding, irritability, and a high-pitched cry. The fontanelle appears bulging. What condition should the nurse suspect? A. Meningitis. B. Hydrocephalus. C. Increased intracranial pressure. D. Dehydration. Answer. C. Increased intracranial pressure. Rationale. A bulging fontanelle, poor feeding, irritability, and a high-pitched cry in an infant suggest increased intracranial pressure. This could be due to conditions like meningitis or hydrocephalus. Question 4. An 8-year-old child is admitted with a diagnosis of acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. What is the priority nursing action upon admission? A. Start chemotherapy immediately. B. Place the child in protective isolation. C. Begin IV fluids to prevent dehydration. D. Assess for signs of infection. Answer. D. Assess for signs of infection. Rationale. Children with ALL are immunocompromised and at high risk for infections. Assessing for infection is a priority to prevent complications. Starting chemotherapy and isolation may follow, but are not the initial priority. Question 5. A three-year-old child with a history of asthma presents with wheezing, coughing, and difficulty breathing. What is the first-line medication that the nurse anticipates will be ordered? A. Oral prednisone. B. Inhaled corticosteroids. C. Nebulized albuterol. D. Montelicast. Answer. C. Nebulized albuterol. Rationale. Nebulized albuterol is a bronchodilator that provides quick relief for asthma symptoms. Inhaled corticosteroids and Montelicast are used for long-term control, while prednisone is typically used for severe exacerbations. Question 6. A 5-year-old child presents with petechiae and a platelet count of 20,000. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Start IV fluids. B. Prepare for a platelet transfusion. C. Monitor for signs of bleeding. D. Administer antibiotics. Answer. C. Monitor for signs of bleeding. Rationale. 
With a low platelet count, the child is at risk for bleeding. Monitoring for signs of bleeding is crucial. Platelet transfusion may be required, but monitoring is the immediate priority. Question 7. A 7-year-old child with type 1 diabetes is admitted with polyuria, polydipsia, and a fruity odor to the breath. What condition is most likely? A. Hypoglycemia. B. Diabetic ketoacidosis. C. Hyperglycemia. D. Diabetes insipidus. Answer. B. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Rationale. Polyuria, polydipsia, and fruity breath odor are classic signs of diabetic ketoacidosis, a serious complication of type 1 diabetes. Hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia do not typically present with fruity breath odor. Question 8. A 12-year-old patient with cystic fibrosis presents with increased cough, fever, and decreased lung function. What is the most appropriate nursing intervention? A. Administer chest physiotherapy. B. Increase oral fluid intake. C. Prepare for a chest x-ray. D. Administer bronchodilators. Answer. C. Prepare for a chest x-ray. Rationale. A chest x-ray is necessary to assess for a potential lung infection, which is common in cystic fibrosis patients. Chest physiotherapy and bronchodilators are important but should follow the diagnostic evaluation. Question 9. A four-year-old child with a history of severe allergic reactions presents with urticaria and wheezing after eating peanuts. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer diphenhydramine. B. Call for emergency assistance. C. Administer epinephrine. D. Start an IV line. Answer. C. Administer epinephrine. Rationale. Epinephrine is the first-line treatment for anaphylaxis and should be administered immediately to reverse symptoms. Other interventions follow stabilization with epinephrine. Question 10. A six-month-old infant is diagnosed with bronchiolitis. What is the primary cause of this condition? A. Streptococcus pneumoniae. B. Respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. C. Haemophilus influenza. D. Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Answer. B. Respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Rationale. RSV is the most common cause of bronchiolitis in infants. Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza are more commonly associated with bacterial pneumonia, while Mycoplasma pneumoniae is less common in this age group. Question 11. A nurse is assessing a two-year-old child with suspected meningitis. Which clinical manifestation should the nurse prioritize? A. High fever. B. Nuchal rigidity. C. Vomiting. D. Irritability. Answer. B. Nuchal rigidity. Rationale. Nuchal rigidity, stiff neck, is a key sign of meningitis and warrants immediate further assessment and intervention. While fever, vomiting, and irritability are also important, nuchal rigidity is more specific to meningitis. Question 12. A 10-year-old child with asthma is brought to the emergency department with severe respiratory distress. Which assessment finding indicates the need for immediate intervention? A. Wheezing. B. Retractions. C. Cyanosis. D. Tachypnea. Answer. C. Cyanosis. Rationale. Cyanosis indicates hypoxemia and requires immediate intervention. Wheezing, retractions, and tachypnea are serious but not as immediately life-threatening as cyanosis. Question 13. A three-year-old child is diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. 
What is the primary complication the nurse should monitor for? A. Renal failure. B. Myocardial infarction. C. Respiratory distress. D. Hepatic dysfunction. Answer. B. Myocardial infarction. Rationale. Kawasaki disease can lead to coronary artery aneurysms, which increase the risk of myocardial infarction. Monitoring for cardiac complications is crucial. Question 14. A 5-year-old child with a history of sickle cell anemia presents with severe abdominal pain and swelling of the hands and feet. What is the most likely cause? A. Acute chest syndrome. B. Splenic sequestration. C. Vasoocclusive crisis. D. A plastic crisis. Answer. C. Vasoocclusive crisis. Rationale. A vasoocclusive crisis is characterized by severe pain and can cause swelling in the extremities. It is a common complication of sickle cell anemia. Question 15. A nurse is providing education to the parents of a two-year-old child with congenital hypothyroidism. Which statement should be included in the teaching? A. Your child will need thyroid hormone replacement for life. B. Avoid giving your child iodine-rich foods. C. Regular blood tests are not necessary once treatment starts. D. This condition will resolve by school age. Answer. A. Your child will need thyroid hormone replacement for life. Rationale. Congenital hypothyroidism requires lifelong thyroid hormone replacement. Regular blood tests are necessary to monitor levels, and the condition does not resolve with age. Question 16. A six-year-old child with a history of seizures is admitted with status epilepticus. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer IV lorazepam as ordered. B. Monitor the child's vital signs. C. Obtain a complete health history. D. Prepare for an EEG. Answer. A. Administer IV lorazepam as ordered. Rationale. IV lorazepam is the first-line treatment for status epilepticus to stop the seizure. Monitoring vital signs and other interventions follow stabilization. Question 17. A four-year-old child presents with a high fever, irritability, and a bright red rash on the cheeks. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Measles. B. Scarlet fever. C. Fifth disease. D. Rosella. Answer. C. Fifth disease. Rationale. Fifth disease, caused by parvovirus B19, presents with a characteristic slapped cheek rash, high fever, and irritability. Question 18. A three-year-old child with known peanut allergy presents to the clinic with mild hives after accidental ingestion. What is the nurse's next best action? A. Administer epinephrine. B. Give an oral antihistamine. C. Observe the child for progression of symptoms. D. Call emergency medical services. Answer. B. Give an oral antihistamine. Rationale. For mild hives without other symptoms, an oral antihistamine is appropriate. Epinephrine is reserved for severe reactions, and observation and emergency services may be needed if symptoms progress. Question 19. A five-year-old child is admitted with a diagnosis of acute glomerulonephritis. Which clinical finding should the nurse anticipate? A. Hyperkalemia. B. Hypotension. C. Hematuria. D. Hypoglycemia. Answer. C. Hematuria. Rationale. Hematuria is a common finding in acute glomerulonephritis. 
hyperkalemia and hypotension are less typical, and hypoglycemia is unrelated. Question 20. A nurse is assessing a one-year-old child with suspected dehydration. Which finding would indicate severe dehydration? A. Dry mucous membranes. B. Sunken fontanelle. C. Tachycardia. D. Capillary refill time of 2 seconds. Answer. B. Sunken fontanelle. Rationale. A sunken fontanelle is a sign of severe dehydration in infants. Dry mucous membranes and tachycardia are less specific, and a capillary refill time of 2 seconds is normal. Question 21. A 7-year-old child with type 1 diabetes reports headache, dizziness, and sweating. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer insulin. B. Check the child's blood glucose level. C. Provide a high-protein snack. D. Start an IV line. Answer. B. Check the child's blood glucose level. Rationale. Symptoms suggest hypoglycemia. Checking the blood glucose level is the priority to confirm and then treat appropriately. Question 22. A 9-year-old child with asthma is prescribed a daily inhaled corticosteroid. What is the most important teaching point for the parents? A. Give the medication only during an asthma attack. B. Use a spacer with the inhaler. C. Rinse the mouth after each use. D. Monitor for signs of hyperglycemia. Answer. C. Rinse the mouth after each use. Rationale. Rinsing the mouth after using an inhaled corticosteroid prevents oral thrush. The other instructions are also important, but this one is crucial to prevent a common side effect. Question 23. A nurse is caring for a two-year-old with acute otitis media. What is the most appropriate nursing intervention? A. Administer antibiotic ear drops. B. Encourage fluid intake. C. Apply warm compresses to the ear. D. Educate the parents about ear hygiene. Answer. C. Apply warm compresses to the ear. Rationale. Warm compresses can help alleviate pain. Antibiotic ear drops are not typically used for acute otitis media, which is often treated with oral antibiotics. Fluid intake and ear hygiene are also important but secondary. Question 24. A 10-year-old child with hemophilia presents with a swollen, painful knee after a minor fall. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Apply ice to the knee. B. Administer factor 8 replacement therapy. C. Elevate the leg. D. Administer pain medication. Answer. B. Administer factor 8 replacement therapy. Rationale. Factor 8 replacement therapy is essential to stop the bleeding in hemophilia. Ice and elevation can help with swelling, but addressing the clotting deficiency is the priority. Question 25. A six year old child with a history of recurrent urinary tract infections, UTIs, presents with fever and flank pain. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Cystitis. B. Pyelonephritis. C. Urethritis. D. Glomerulonephritis. Answer. B. Pyelonephritis. Rationale. Fever and flank pain suggest pyelonephritis, a kidney infection. Cystitis and urethritis typically present with lower urinary tract symptoms, while glomerulonephritis has different manifestations. Question 26. A nurse is teaching the parents of a three-year-old child with celiac disease about dietary restrictions. Which food should the nurse instruct them to avoid? A. Rice. B. Corn. C. Oats. D. 
wheat. Answer. D. Wheat. Rationale. Children with celiac disease must avoid gluten, which is found in wheat. Rice and corn are gluten-free, while oats can be contaminated with gluten and should be approached with caution. Question 27. A four-year-old child presents with pallor, fatigue, and a heart murmur. The nurse notes a history of frequent infections. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Iron deficiency anemia. B. A plastic anemia. C. Thalassemia. D. Sickle cell anemia. Answer. B. A plastic anemia. Rationale. A plastic anemia presents with pancytopenia, low counts of all blood cells, leading to pallor, fatigue, heart murmur, and frequent infections. The other conditions typically affect specific blood cells. Question 28. A five-year-old child with a history of eczema presents with a red, weeping rash on the cheeks and flexural areas. What is the most appropriate nursing intervention? A. Apply topical corticosteroids as prescribed. B. Administer oral antibiotics. C. Advise to avoid dairy products. D. Recommend increased sun exposure. Answer. A. Apply topical corticosteroids as prescribed. Rationale. Topical corticosteroids help reduce inflammation and manage eczema flare-ups. Oral antibiotics are used if there is an infection, which is not indicated here. Question 29. A 12-year-old with a history of juvenile idiopathic arthritis, JIA, is experiencing morning stiffness and joint pain. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Encourage physical therapy exercises. B. Administer nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and SEDS. C. Apply heat packs to the affected joints. D. Advise rest until pain subsides. Answer. B. Administer nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. Rationale. NSAIDs are the first-line treatment for reducing inflammation and pain in JIA. Physical therapy and heat packs can help, but NSAIDs provide more immediate relief. Question 30. A three-year-old child is brought to the clinic with a history of lead poisoning. What is the most important nursing intervention? A. Initiate chelation therapy as prescribed. B. Educate parents about dietary sources of lead. C. Monitor for developmental delays. D. Provide hydration to flush out the lead. Answer. A. Initiate chelation therapy as prescribed. Rationale. Chelation therapy is used to bind and remove lead from the body. While education and monitoring are important, chelation therapy is the priority treatment. Question 31. A nurse is caring for a 7-year-old child with nephrotic syndrome. Which finding should the nurse monitor for as a complication of this condition? A. Hyperkalemia. B. Hypertension. C. Hyperglycemia. D. Hypotension. Answer. B. Hypertension. Rationale. Hypertension is a common complication of nephrotic syndrome due to fluid retention. Hyperkalemia and hyperglycemia are not directly associated, and hypotension is less common. Question 32. A five-year-old child with cystic fibrosis is admitted with a suspected respiratory infection. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer prophylactic antibiotics. B. Obtain a sputum culture. C. Perform chest physiotherapy. D. Monitor oxygen saturation. Answer. B. Obtain a sputum culture. Rationale. Obtaining a sputum culture helps identify the causative organism for targeted antibiotic therapy. 
Chest physiotherapy and oxygen monitoring are important, but follow the diagnostic step. Question 33. A four-year-old child is diagnosed with acute otitis media. Which complication should the nurse monitor for? A. Mastoiditis. B. Sinusitis. C. Tonsillitis. D. Conjunctivitis. Answer. A. Mastoiditis. Rationale. Mastoiditis is a potential complication of untreated or severe acute otitis media. Sinusitis, tonsillitis, and conjunctivitis are unrelated complications. Question 34. A 10-year-old child with a history of leukemia presents with fever and neutropenia. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer antibiotics as prescribed. B. Isolate the child in a private room. C. Start IV fluids to maintain hydration. D. Monitor for signs of bleeding. Answer. A. Administer antibiotics as prescribed. Rationale. In a neutropenic patient, fever can indicate a serious infection. Prompt administration of antibiotics is critical. Isolation and hydration are also important but secondary to infection management. Question 35. A two-year-old child with a history of respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, presents with increased work of breathing and wheezing. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Administer bronchodilator as prescribed. B. Monitor oxygen saturation. C. Position the child upright. D. Provide high-flow oxygen. Answer. A. Administer bronchodilator as prescribed. Rationale. Administering a bronchodilator helps alleviate wheezing and improves breathing. Oxygen saturation monitoring and positioning are supportive but not the immediate priority. Question 36. A 9-year-old child with a history of epilepsy is prescribed valproic acid. What side effect should the nurse monitor for? A. Weight loss. B. Hepatotoxicity. C. Hyperactivity. D. Gingival hyperplasia. Answer. B. Hepatotoxicity. Rationale. Valproic acid can cause hepatotoxicity, so liver function should be monitored. Weight gain, not loss, and hyperactivity are less common. Gingival hyperplasia is associated with phenytoin. Question 37. A seven-year-old child presents with a sore throat, fever, and a sandpaper-like rash. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Measles. B. Scarlet fever. C. Chickenpox. D. Hand, foot, and mouth disease. Answer. B. Scarlet fever. Rationale. Scarlet fever, caused by group A streptococcus, presents with a sore throat, fever, and a characteristic sandpaper-like rash. Measles, chickenpox, and hand, foot, and mouth disease have different rash characteristics. Question 38. A six-year-old child with ADHD is prescribed methylphenidate. What is a common side effect the nurse should educate the parents about? A. Weight gain. B. Insomnia. C. Drowsiness. D. Increased appetite. Answer. B. Insomnia. Rationale. Methylphenidate, a stimulant, commonly causes insomnia. Weight loss, not gain, and decreased appetite are also possible side effects. Drowsiness is less common. Question 39. A five-year-old child is brought to the clinic with persistent diarrhea and a history of frequent hospitalizations for dehydration. What underlying condition might the nurse suspect? A. Cystic fibrosis. B. Lactose intolerance. C. 
irritable bowel syndrome. D. Celiac disease. Answer. D. Celiac disease. Rationale. Persistent diarrhea and frequent hospitalizations for dehydration may indicate celiac disease, which affects nutrient absorption. The other conditions have different primary symptoms. Question 40. A 12-year-old child with a history of rheumatic fever presents with shortness of breath and chest pain. What is the most likely complication? A. Pericarditis. B. Myocarditis. C. Endocarditis. D. Dalvular heart disease. Answer. D. Dalvular heart disease. Rationale. Rheumatic fever can lead to valvular heart disease, causing symptoms like shortness of breath and chest pain. Pericarditis, myocarditis, and endocarditis are possible but less common. Question 41. A six-year-old child presents with sudden onset of unilateral limp and refusal to bear weight on the affected leg. The child has a low-grade fever and the hip is held in flexion, abduction, and external rotation. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Leg Capertis disease. B. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis. C. Septic arthritis. D. Transient synovitis. Answer. C. Septic arthritis. Rationale. Septic arthritis presents with sudden onset of pain, limp, fever, and a hip held in a flexed, abducted, and externally rotated position. Prompt diagnosis and treatment are essential to prevent joint damage. Question 42. A 10-year-old child with a history of asthma is experiencing a severe asthma attack. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer an oral corticosteroid. B. Start high-flow oxygen. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. D. Prepare for intubation. Answer. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. Rationale. A nebulized bronchodilator provides rapid relief of bronchospasm during a severe asthma attack. High-flow oxygen and corticosteroids are supportive, while intubation is a last resort. Question 43. A 7-year-old child with type 1 diabetes is admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. Which laboratory result would the nurse expect to find? A. Low blood glucose. B. High serum bicarbonate. C. Elevated ketones. D. Low potassium. Answer. C. Elevated ketones. Rationale. DKA is characterized by elevated ketones due to fat metabolism. Blood glucose is high, bicarbonate is low, and potassium can be variable. Question 44. A 7-year-old child with a history of type 1 diabetes is brought to the clinic with complaints of nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. The blood glucose level is 450 mg per deciliter, and ketones are present in the urine. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer rapid-acting insulin. B. Encourage oral fluid intake. C. Provide a high-protein snack. D. Monitor for signs of hypoglycemia. Answer. A. Administer rapid-acting insulin. Rationale. The child is exhibiting signs of diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, and the priority intervention is to lower blood glucose levels with rapid-acting insulin. Fluid intake and monitoring are also important but secondary to insulin administration. Question 45. A nurse is assessing a 6-year-old child with suspected appendicitis. Which clinical sign is most indicative of this condition? A. Positive Murphy's sign. B. Positive McBurney's point tenderness. C. Positive Cullen's sign. D. Positive Gray-Turner's sign. Answer. B. 
Positive McBurney's Point Tenderness Rationale McBurney's Point Tenderness is a key sign of appendicitis. Murphy's sign indicates gallbladder disease, while Cullen's and Gray-Turner's signs are associated with pancreatitis. Question 46. A five-year-old child with a history of febrile seizures presents with a temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit, 39.4 degrees Celsius. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer antipyretics as ordered. B. Start an IV line. C. Place the child in a cool bath. D. Prepare for possible intubation. Answer. A. Administer antipyretics as ordered. Rationale. Administering antipyretics helps reduce fever and the risk of febrile seizures. Other interventions are supportive but not the immediate priority. Question 47. A two-year-old child with Down syndrome presents with a new onset of bruising and petechiae. What condition should the nurse suspect? A. Idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. B. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. C. Hemophilia. D. Von Willebrand disease. Answer. B. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. Rationale. Children with Down syndrome have an increased risk of ALL, which can present with bruising and petechiae. IDP, hemophilia, and von Willebrand disease are less likely but possible. Question 48. A three-year-old child with a history of neuroblastoma presents with abdominal distension and a palpable mass in the abdomen. What diagnostic test is most appropriate to confirm the diagnosis? A. Chest X-ray. B. Abdominal ultrasound. C. MRI of the abdomen. D. Complete blood count. Answer. B. Abdominal ultrasound. Rationale. An abdominal ultrasound is a non-invasive and effective initial diagnostic test for identifying an abdominal mass in a child with suspected neuroblastoma. Question 49. A nurse is caring for a five-year-old child with suspected appendicitis. Which sign or symptom should the nurse prioritize for further evaluation? A. Intermittent diarrhea. B. Generalized abdominal pain. C. Pain localized at McBurney's point. D. Low-grade fever. Answer. C. Pain localized at McBurney's point. Rationale. Pain localized at McBurney's point is a classic sign of appendicitis and requires immediate evaluation to prevent complications such as perforation. Question 50. A six-month-old infant is admitted with a diagnosis of pyloric stenosis. Which clinical manifestation is characteristic of this condition? A. Bilious vomiting. B. Projectile vomiting. C. Watery diarrhea. D. Abdominal distension. Answer. B. Projectile vomiting. Rationale. Pyloric stenosis typically presents with projectile vomiting in infants. It is caused by hypertrophy of the pyloric muscle, leading to obstruction. Question 51. A six-year-old child with a history of asthma is prescribed Montelicast. What is the primary purpose of this medication? A. Immediate relief of bronchospasm. B. Long-term control of asthma symptoms. C. Treatment of acute asthma attacks. D. Management of allergic rhinitis. Answer. B. Long-term control of asthma symptoms. Rationale. Montelicast is used for long-term control of asthma symptoms. It is not for immediate relief or acute attacks, though it can help with allergic rhinitis. Question 52. A 9-year-old child with type 1 diabetes reports headache, dizziness, and sweating. 
The blood glucose level is 60 mg per deciliter. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer insulin. B. Provide a high-protein snack. C. Give 15 grams of carbohydrates. D. Start an IV line. Answer. C. Give 15 grams of carbohydrates. Rationale. The priority is to treat hypoglycemia by giving a quick source of carbohydrates. Insulin and protein snacks are inappropriate, and an IV line is unnecessary. Question 53. A four-year-old child with asthma is brought to the emergency department with severe wheezing and difficulty breathing. Which medication should the nurse anticipate administering first? A. Inhaled corticosteroid. B. Oral prednisone. C. Nebulized albuterol. D. Montelicast. Answer. C. Nebulized albuterol. Rationale. Nebulized albuterol is a fast-acting bronchodilator that provides immediate relief during an acute asthma attack. Inhaled corticosteroids and other medications are for long-term control. Question 54. A five-year-old child with cystic fibrosis is admitted with increased cough and fever. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer antibiotics as prescribed. B. Perform chest physiotherapy. C. Obtain a sputum culture. D. Monitor oxygen saturation. Answer. C. Obtain a sputum culture. Rationale. Obtaining a sputum culture identifies the causative organism for targeted antibiotic therapy. Chest physiotherapy and oxygen monitoring are important but follow the diagnostic step. Question 55. A two-year-old child presents with sudden onset of high fever, drooling, and stridor. The child is sitting forward with the neck extended. What is the most appropriate initial action? A. Administer antibiotics. B. Start an IV line. C. Prepare for intubation. D. Obtain a throat culture. Answer. C. Prepare for intubation. Rationale. The child's symptoms suggest epiglottitis, a medical emergency that can rapidly obstruct the airway. Preparing for intubation is critical to secure the airway before it becomes completely blocked. Question 56. A nurse is caring for a three-year-old child with dehydration. Which laboratory result is the most concerning? A. Elevated hematocrit. B. Low serum sodium. C. High serum potassium. D. Increased blood urea nitrogen, BUN. Answer. B. Low serum sodium. Rationale. Hyponatremia can be life-threatening and requires immediate attention. Elevated hematocrit and BUN are common in dehydration, and high potassium is concerning but less common in this context. Question 57. A seven-year-old child with a history of asthma is experiencing a severe asthma attack. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer an oral corticosteroid. B. Start high-flow oxygen. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. D. Prepare for intubation. Answer. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. Rationale. A nebulized bronchodilator provides rapid relief of bronchospasm during a severe asthma attack. High-flow oxygen and corticosteroids are supportive, while intubation is a last resort. Question 58. A nurse is assessing a five-year-old child who was stung by a bee and is now experiencing difficulty breathing, hives, and swelling of the face. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer diphenhydramine. B. Apply a cold compress to the sting site. C. 
Administer epinephrine. D. Elevate the affected limb. Answer. C. Administer epinephrine. Rationale. The child is experiencing anaphylaxis, which requires immediate administration of epinephrine to counteract the severe allergic reaction and prevent respiratory failure. Question 59. A four-year-old child presents with a fever, stiff neck, and photophobia. What is the priority nursing action? A. Administer acetaminophen. B. Prepare for a lumbar puncture. C. Start IV antibiotics. D. Isolate the child. Answer. C. Start IV antibiotics. Rationale. Prompt administration of IV antibiotics is crucial in suspected meningitis to prevent severe complications. Preparing for a lumbar puncture and isolation are important but follow antibiotic administration. Question 60. A nurse is assessing a six-year-old child with suspected appendicitis. Which clinical sign is most indicative of this condition? A. Positive Murphy's sign. B. Positive McBurney's point tenderness. C. Positive Cullen sign. D. Positive Gray Turner sign. Answer. B. Positive McBurney's point tenderness. Rationale. McBurney's point tenderness is a key sign of appendicitis. Murphy's sign indicates gallbladder disease, while Cullen's and Gray Turner's signs are associated with pancreatitis. Question 61. A five-year-old child with a history of febrile seizures presents with a temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit, 39.4 degrees Celsius. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer antipyretics as ordered. B. Start an IV line. C. Place the child in a cool bath. D. Prepare for possible intubation. Answer. A. Administer antipyretics as ordered. Rationale. Administering antipyretics helps reduce fever and the risk of febrile seizures. Other interventions are supportive but not the immediate priority. Question 62. A two-year-old child with Down syndrome presents with a new onset of bruising and petechiae. What condition should the nurse suspect? A. Idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. B. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. C. Hemophilia. D. Von Willebrand disease. Answer. B. Acute lymphocytic leukemia, ALL. Rationale. Children with Down syndrome have an increased risk of ALL, which can present with bruising and petechiae. IDP, hemophilia, and von Willebrand disease are less likely but possible. Question 63. A nurse is caring for a three-year-old child with congenital heart disease. Which sign indicates heart failure? A. Weight gain. B. Bradycardia. C. Increased appetite. D. Decreased respiratory rate. Answer. A. Weight gain. Rationale. Weight gain due to fluid retention is a sign of heart failure. Bradycardia, increased appetite, and decreased respiratory rate are less specific. Question 64. A four-year-old child is admitted with suspected intussusception. What is the characteristic sign the nurse should look for? A. Current jelly stools. B. Ribbon-like stools. C. Steatorrhea. D. Bloody diarrhea. Answer. A. Current jelly stools. Rationale. Current jelly stools, which contain blood and mucus, are characteristic of intussusception. Ribbon-like stools suggest Hirschsprung disease, and steatorrhea indicates malabsorption. Question 65. A seven-year-old child with a history of seizures is prescribed phenytoin. 
What side effect should the nurse monitor for? A. Weight loss. B. Gingival hyperplasia. C. Insomnia. D. Hepatotoxicity. Answer. B. Gingival hyperplasia. Rationale. Gingival hyperplasia is a common side effect of phenytoin. Weight gain, not loss, insomnia, and hepatotoxicity are less common with this medication. Question 66. A six-year-old child with a history of asthma is prescribed Montalyacast. What is the primary purpose of this medication? A. Immediate relief of bronchospasm. B. Long-term control of asthma symptoms. C. Treatment of acute asthma attacks. D. Management of allergic rhinitis. Answer. B. Long-term control of asthma symptoms. Rationale. Montelicast is used for long-term control of asthma symptoms. It is not for immediate relief or acute attacks, though it can help with allergic rhinitis. Question 67. A 9-year-old child with type 1 diabetes reports headache, dizziness, and sweating. The blood glucose level is 60 mg per deciliter. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Administer insulin. B. Provide a high-protein snack. C. Give 15 grams of carbohydrates. D. Start an IV line. Answer. C. Give 15 grams of carbohydrates. Rationale. The priority is to treat hypoglycemia by giving a quick source of carbohydrates. Insulin and protein snacks are inappropriate, and an IV line is unnecessary. Question 68. A two-year-old child with a history of otitis media presents with ear pain and drainage. What complication should the nurse monitor for? A. Mastoiditis. B. Sinusitis. C. Tonsillitis. D. Conjunctivitis. Answer. A. Mastoiditis. Rationale. Mastoiditis is a potential complication of otitis media. Sinusitis, tonsillitis, and conjunctivitis are not direct complications. Question 69. A five-year-old child with cystic fibrosis is admitted with increased cough and fever. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer antibiotics as prescribed. B. Perform chest physiotherapy. C. Obtain a sputum culture. D. Monitor oxygen saturation. Answer. C. Obtain a sputum culture. Rationale. Obtaining a sputum culture identifies the causative organism for targeted antibiotic therapy. Chest physiotherapy and oxygen monitoring are important but follow the diagnostic step. Question 70. A four-year-old child is diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. Which clinical finding should the nurse monitor for? A. Hyperkalemia. B. Hypertension. C. Coronary artery aneurysms. D. Hepatic dysfunction. Answer. C. Coronary artery aneurysms. Rationale. Kawasaki disease can lead to coronary artery aneurysms. Hyperkalemia and hypertension are less typical, and hepatic dysfunction is unrelated. Question 71. A nurse is caring for a three-year-old child with dehydration. Which laboratory result is the most concerning? A. Elevated hematocrit. B. Low serum sodium. C. High serum potassium. D. Increased blood urea nitrogen, BUN. Answer. B. Low serum sodium. Rationale. Hyponatremia can be life-threatening and requires immediate attention. Elevated hematocrit and BUN are common in dehydration, 
and high potassium is concerning but less common in this context. Question 72. A seven-year-old child with a history of asthma is experiencing a severe asthma attack. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Administer an oral corticosteroid. B. Start high-flow oxygen. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. D. Prepare for intubation. Answer. C. Administer a nebulized bronchodilator. Rationale. A nebulized bronchodilator provides rapid relief of bronchospasm during a severe asthma attack. High flow oxygen and corticosteroids are supportive, while intubation is a last resort. Question 73. A 9-year-old child with type 1 diabetes is admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. Which laboratory result would the nurse expect to find? A. Low blood glucose. B. High serum bicarbonate. C. Elevated ketones. D. Low potassium. Answer. C. Elevated ketones. Rationale. DKA is characterized by elevated ketones due to fat metabolism. Blood glucose is high, bicarbonate is low, and potassium can be variable. Question 74. A four-year-old child presents with a fever, stiff neck, and photophobia. What is the priority nursing action? A. Administer acetaminophen. B. Prepare for a lumbar puncture. C. Start IV antibiotics. D. Isolate the child. Answer. C. Start IV antibiotics. Rationale. Prompt administration of IV antibiotics is crucial in suspected meningitis to prevent severe complications. Preparing for a lumbar puncture and isolation are important but follow antibiotic administration. Question 75. A nurse is assessing a six-year-old child with suspected appendicitis. Which clinical sign is most indicative of this condition? A. Positive Murphy's sign. B. Positive McBurney's point tenderness. C. Positive Cullen's sign. D. Positive Gray-Turner sign. Answer. B. Positive McBurney's point tenderness. Rationale. McBurney's point tenderness is a key sign of appendicitis. Murphy's sign indicates gallbladder disease, while Cullen's and Gray-Turner's signs are associated with pancreatitis.